All right, so today we're going to talk about content center and steel shapes. I'm going to show you how to change description and part number for all the steel shapes in content center. I have a frame generator assembly with a skeleton part inside and we're going to try and place steel shape from content center to see how the default description and part number looks like. As you see, the precision is three digits, so it comes in a micron precision. We're gonna change that later. I'm gonna give it a part number. I already made a drawing for the assembly and placed the parts list. So it says cold formed welded structural hollow section. It doesn't mean anything, especially when you have a part number. Let me just put my part number in. Right. So the trick here is to save it to your own read write library. The default libraries are read-only, so you need to copy the, the, the library that you want to modify to your own library. We're going to call it square hollow section. And I'm going to delete the description there. I don't really need to change the part number and the file name now, but I'm going to do it. Uh, we can do it later on the family table. Okay. So now, when you right click on the family, there's a small menu. It's not the full menu. In order to get the full menu, you need to be on your library. Instead of being on merged view, that shows all the libraries. See, this is the full menu you need to be on your library to have access to the full menu. Let's try and place the newly created family. I'm gonna create the uh, call this square hollow section template because we're gonna change this and customize it and then do replace family template to change the whole family template. What we want to do is change the way GL, the length parameter, is being displayed. So we're going to take the precision to zero and we're going to take out millimeters, units, and now we're going to do a replace family template. So basically what I've done is I've removed millimeters, the units, and changed the precision to one millimeter instead of three digits precision because I've never manufactured anything with a bigger precision than one millimeter. I have a simple rule. My file name is always, always equal with part number. So we're going to do that in here. I can always find a model based on the file name. Material, we're going to change it to the default supplied material, which is structural 275JR. We're going to change the precision 
for the length. So now it comes in three digits precision. We're gonna change that to one. And on the right, 16,000, that's the maximum length. So if your supplier can deliver 24 meters, then you should enter the value in there. Now what you wanna do is change the part number a bit. I don't like to have any spaces on my part number only because it's the file name as well. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are two spaces just before the length there. So I'm gonna delete that and all the spaces. Couple of words on material. I don't recommend that you do another family with a different material or that you append all these uh, rows again in the family with a different material. What I do recommend is when you place um, a component, just change the material from bill of material or from the eye properties. So now we're just gonna add another column called description, which we're gonna link to, we're gonna map to inventor property description and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an expression for the description which is pretty much the same as the part number but uh, I can have spaces in here it's just a description I just want to make it look neater plus it'll um, wrap on the parts list table and what we're gonna do we're gonna push all this as a formula so we're gonna say send all this as a formula which will get the length from the model so we're gonna say equals to square hollow section and then right at the end we're gonna put GL which is which it means get the length from the model so every time the length in the model changes the description for that part will change uh, not BLGL sorry just gonna see in a bit I just add LG at the end all right make this bigger yeah that looks good published successfully now let's try and place some still shapes from the newly created family. That's mine. You see the precision, it already comes in one millimeter length. Uh, we're gonna call it number two, that's my number two, I already gave it a part number. Now the description looks good. It got, I'm not sure if you can see, the fx means it's a formula and it got the length from the model. So if you're gonna change the size now, let's just put the part number first. Okay, that looks good, that looks much better. That's exactly what we want, okay. Now if I change the size, different size, different length, let's look at the properties. Unfortunately the part number is not consistent, it's being reverted to default, but the description has updated properly. So just if you use change size from an assembly, make sure you put the part number back. That is, if you use part numbers. The other way of not losing the part number is to change the length from within functions. Say, so change it to 700, description has updated, and you didn't lose the part number. So that's another way of changing, but this only works for length. If you want to change size, you do that from an assembly and you lose part number. Now don't change 
the the extrusion type from two because that's useful especially in a frame generator we'll see that later now even when I use change size it already picked the new length of 700 let's extrude the skeleton do a frame we just need these uh, the side edges and try the frame generator choose the size that's good enough now let's do a table sort of frame four legs and the, and the top yep that's good Let's dimension the frame, the overall width, length and height. Let's finalize with uh, the frame generator members, let's trim. Just trim the legs now. That's fine. Now let's measure. Let's see what our frame should should look like. I mean, what the dimension should be. So we should have a ten sixty by fifteen sixty. Okay, let's go back to the drawing. Yep. See the description have, has updated for all of them, so it's working for frame generator as well. I don't have to make a drawing for each and every component. I can just dimension it out of the assembly. The guys in the workshop have all the information in the parts list to manufacture this. So I'll just put some overall dimensions and I'm done. This concludes our presentation on content center steel shapes. Thanks for watching.